Hello, everyone. Welcome, new subscribers. Thank you, subscribers, for following us, liking, and sharing our videos. Thank you for all your support. If you're here for the first time, please hit the subscribe button. My name is Reverend Penelope Stewart. You can follow Chemistry on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Today, we're going to be talking about chakras. What are chakras and how do we align them? What do they do? Now, if you're new to this path, you've probably been hearing a lot about chakras, opening the chakras and getting that energy moving. And so today I'm going to go in depth with the chakras and talk about what the chakras really are, what they do. And I'm going to talk about it from an African spirituality point of view. I don't think many people have talked about the chakras in depth the way I'm going to talk about them now. So try to have a seat and relax and I'm trying to go through here as quickly as I can because I don't want to make this video long, long. but I also want you to understand exactly what chakras are as well. Alright, so let's just dive in and let's just talk about chakras. What is chakra? Well, chakra, uh, the word chakra is Sanskrit, is a Sanskrit word for will. Alright, as chakras are energy centers located on the midline of the body. Now, they assure that we are functionally, optimally, and what keeps us going psychologically, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Now, all living things have these energy centers within them. Humans are not the only one that have these chakras. Animals have chakras as well. Now, chakras by definitions, like I say, are energy centers within the body. There's seven chakras. All right, and like I said, they're positioned at the base of your spine. And the idea of working with chakras is to awaken that energy inside of the chakra that's called Kundalini. You're going to hear that being used a lot. And, you know, once, there, once you get to talking about chakras or looking into chakras, you're going to see Kundalini. So let's just find out what Kundalini is. Kundalini has been known all over the world. In different countries, different religions, and sects all have their name of the reference for this unseen energy. The symbol of the serpent has been connected to the masters and adepts of many of the world's spiritual traditions. Every place the serpent was worshipped had had its own name for this sacred symbol. In India, this kundalini energy was called Nagas. Now you're going to see that in the Eastern religion and traditions, you're going to see that, that kundalini energy show up a lot in the Eastern religions such as Buddhism, Hinduism. Of that such, you're going to see that kundalini energy be more present there in those Eastern religions and traditions. And then in Mexico, by the Mayans or in the Americas, you see, you have them calling this serpent the plumed serpent. Or that name, I can't pronounce it. I've spelt it up there because I couldn't pronounce it. But I'm going to take a shot at it. I'm going to call it the Quizicotl. That's what they call this serpent. Or you can call it Plume Serpent as well. This was popular in Mexico or among the Mayans as well. All right. And in Egypt, it was called Jedi. In Britain, it was called adders, and in China, they're called dragons. Collectively, they are known as serpents of wisdom. 
In the worlds of spiritual history, ancient civilizations from Africa to India to China and Europe have all predicted the awesome serpent consciousness raises her head works through our body and brings us all to the state of sacred marriage with the divine. Now you see here the origin of the rainbow chakras and the kundalini serpent was first derived from the Yoruba Orisha system of ancient West Africa deified in the divinity of the Usamore. It was later taken to Kemet and became the Uraeus and then transferred to the Adamese of ancient India who established yoga which influenced Buddhism. So you see it, it come from the most ancient cultures and then move around the world here. All right. So I, I bet you a lot of you didn't know that. Kundalini is a serpent goddess who lies asleep at the base of the spine, coiled three and a half times around the first chakra. Her name is Kundalini Shakti, and her and she represents the unfolding of divine Shakti energy, the energizing potential of life itself, a living goddess who who lives in all things all right so we're talking about this divine feminine energy again some people i think in kabbalah they'll probably call her sophia you know of wisdom this energy that that lives within these energy centers so what we're trying to do once again i'm going to say that is get this energy moving through the chakras all right, certain circumstances can stimulate the awakening of the kundalini energy. It's usually triggered by such things as extended periods of meditation. That's why when you get to working with your chakras, you're going to be encouraged to do some meditation. Some people get into yoga, fasting. Stress can also open up certain of chakras but that means that something is probably going to be out of balance as stre stress has opened up that got that kundalini energy moving something is, is probably going to be a little bit out of whack trauma trauma can get that kundalini energy moving as well because you go into that fight and flight thing and, and it, it can open up that can get that kundalini energy flowing again we have to learn how to balance this kundalini energy as well. And we do this by balancing our chakras. All right. Psychedelic drugs and near death experience can, can get that kundalini energy moving as well. Now, a lot of our ancestors use that DMT, ayahuasca, peyote, also to tap into those energy set, uh, centers as well. Some people use LX, LSD. LSD, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But I do encourage you to use the more indigenous forms such as peyote, uh, ayahuasca, salivia. Uh, cannabis has been used too. That's an that's the ancient one that has been used too to open up the chakras. So I encourage you to use something that has been used, you know, mostly by our ancestors or by indigenous cultures. A near death experience can open up the third eye. I've seen that too, where people have a near death experience and they come back and they just can't see spirits. So it can't open up that third eye. But again, if the rest of these chakras are not balanced it's going to have a negative impact on you so the idea is to get those things into balance kundalini energy awakens and begins to rise through the body piercing and open up the chakra as she moves in her undulating and snake-like fashion as kundalini releases stored and blocked energies her movement can be quite intense sometimes painful often leads to mental states that seem out of this world all right because we're dealing with our consciousness as well as we begin to work with this kundalini energy but this is all going to make sense as i move on in this discussion in awakening the power of the kundalini the path of the kundalini initiation 
has always started the same way when the aspirant slowly begins the journey of raising his or her life force and consciousness. This is often accompanied by what can seem like a mental psychosis. Rousing this vital energy can take a few days, weeks, months, or a lifetime depending on the individual. All right, so, you know, this is all about evolving too. Some people are going to evolve faster than others. All right, so this is about not just evolving your, you know, balancing your your energy, but it's also about evolving consciously as well. Once the root chakra, home of the Kundalini, opens, the static energy house there flows freely through the entire system, provided that there are no serious blockages in one's energy centers, which some of us are not going to have any blockages, just a few of us, but most of us are going to have some type of energy blockages, and that's just normal, all right? Some, some energy centers are going to work better than the other. That's normal as well, all right? As long as we can find some type of balance, bringing that into balance and start working on ourselves, all right? Kundalini is condensed primal force similar to the potential energy found in water. When released, it creates a vertical connection between the chakras by opening the subtle channels known as Nadi. Most specifically, the central channels that move up the spine called Sushna. If we put water through a small hose at very high pressure, the end of the hose will adulate like a snake. Similarly, the intense energy of the kundalini undulates in the body as it rises through the chakras. So as this energy opens up because it's coiled at the bottom, this kundalini energy is coiled at the bottom like a snake. And it begins to rise up as we begin to open the chakras. All right. So let's move on. The benefit of learning about the chakras, the chakra system, is to understand on a whole that when all parts of you are communicating equally and working in alliance with each other, the energy from your body will be reinforcing and you will feel at your optimum level. So when we got these chakras, you know, the mind, body, and spirit in line, and we got these chakras flowing, then we're going to feel at our best. All right? That, that is the goal to get everything in the balance because if you're tired, you're sleepy, you're depressed, you're plagued by anger, or, you know, maybe you feel a little loopy sometime, or you're not making good decisions, well, this would be an indication that you probably need to get your chakras in balance. And once you do this, you're going to feel a lot better. Okay? When our chakras are out of balance, it can have a profound impact on our physical, emotional, and mental spirit, spiritual health. All right? When they are out of balance or alignment, both our bodies and our lives are likely to be out of balance as well. So let's look at this chakra chart because this chakra chart kind of tells you what it's like when the chakras are out of balance and what it's like when they're in balance. So take a very close look at this chart because it kind of it tells you what what your chakra should be like and what they represent and what they're connected to. All right. So let's move on. Sometimes people on the path of spiritual development will overemphasize the top chakras, believing that this is the way to become enlightened. Someone with the top heavy chakra system, the top three or four chakras overactive in relation to the three bottom chakras might be spacey, undergrounded, ungrounded, have difficulty finishing things, have difficulty concentrating, lack common sense, be out of touch, and just generally have difficulty living in the world. So a lot of people too, I've seen that, 
I see it all the time. People get in a rush to open up their third eye. I mean, that's the only thing they want to open. They don't want to focus on any of the chakras, you know, focus on any of the other energy centers. They just want to open up that third eye. But this can be dangerous as well because it leaves you susceptible to deception and illusions and not making good choices. So, you know, we have to open up all all of the chakras and not, not just specific ones, but all of them should be balanced and open. All right. On the other hand, sometimes people are out of balance with the lower three chakras over overactive in comparison to the entire system. Such individuals might lack imagination, creativity, lack vision, lack higher dreams, feel unconnected to the divine, be overly sexual, lack higher reasoning power, be overbearing or unsubtle, getting trapped in the drama of life and have a hard time rising to above the basic physicality of life. Chakra balancing in concert, in concert with other techniques often provides a great deal of emotional healing and spiritual healing and can help prevent physical disease. So when we got these chakras, we're working on these chakras and we're balancing our energy, we can also avoid physical illness and disease as well when we get these energy centers in balance. And that's the main thing that, you know, the main reason for balancing them to avoid any type of mental or physical disease. All right, so let's move on. Now, consciousness. Consciousness is the experience of being which represents everything that is possible for us to experience. All of our senses, perceptions, and possible states of awareness can be divided into seven categories that are associated with each of the seven chakras. Now, see, a lot of people don't talk about the consciousness being uh, attached to the chakras because not only are we evolving our energy centers, but our consciousness e is evolving as well. Remember that the ancient called this the serpent of divine consciousness, the serpent of wisdom. You know, we are evolving consciously as well when we work on our chakras. First chakra is survival, vitality, grounded to the physical life. The second chakra is emotions, nurturing, and shelter. The third chakra is thoughts and power systems. The fourth chakra is love and relationships. So the third and fourth chakra, to me, because see, now they have it here on transformation, but it should be relationships because it's dealing with our heart and you'll see too once you start working on your chakras you're going to be working on that heart chakra to do a lot of healing on the other chakra so you'll be going back to your heart chakra a lot all right the fifth chakra is communication higher creativity the sixth chakra is inspiration imagination and spiritual power the seventh chakra is uni unity with multi-dimensional consciousness. The chakras represent not only a particular part of our body, but also parts of our consciousness. Each chakra represents how our unconscious and superconscious selves communicate with our conscious self. This relationship between behavior and our dominant chakra is key because energy acts like a magnet. We constantly attract vibrations to ourselves that are on the same wavelength as the chakras from which we are operating. All right, so I know many of you have not heard that described from that perspective, but not only are we dealing with our seven chakras, but we're dealing with the seven levels of consciousness when we work with our chakras. Now, remember me telling you that I was going to talk up, go in depth about the chakras from and in Deej's point of view or from an African spirituality point of view, well, I'm getting ready to dive in there now. Now, much like Sanskrit chakra system, the Orisha reside in the human body as the spinning wheels of energy. 
Because remember that the Arisha are prime mortal being. And the energy that we're dealing with is the prime mortal Kundalini energy. All right? They vibrate at different levels of frequency and operate on different continuums or mediums. The Arisha fall into subtle energy categories. The seven African powers can represent the seven chakras that reside along the spine. Shango usually represents the first chakra. Yamaya represents the second. Oshun represents the third. Ogun represents the fourth chakra. Avatala represents the fifth chakra. The Omnamilya represents the sixth. And the seventh is represented by the Ori. The Orisha exists on different levels of consciousness or planes of existences. See, all of this is consciousness. Now, you see where all of this is tying in now? See where it's all tying in? All seven Orishas have their own channels sending out different messages for different purposes. So all of them on different wavelengths and different frequencies. Now we're going to go in and look at the chakras from the Orisha point of view. All right. So we're going to start with Shango. Now, Shango is represented again by the root chakra. You're going to focus on relaxing tensions in order to reduce karma and worldly entanglement. Guard against polluting sensory organs, organs through overindulgence. Begin to act wisely with moderation. Seek liberation from lower realms. Guard against violent behavior based on insecurity. Be motivated towards self-improvement. All of this is about character work as well because we're mastering self. All right. So I didn't read all of these, but you're welcome to come back and read all of these. All right. And let's move on to the second chakra, which is the sacral chakra, Yamoja, Yamaya. Here we focus on observe and study the effect of the moon upon the emotions. Going to be doing a lot of emotional work. Monetary work should perceive fulfillment of sensual desires and sexual life. <laughs> Free of anger, envy, and greed. Elevate the consciousness through fine arts and crafts. Then we have Oshun. Oshun is it's represented by the solar plexus. And the focus here is to recognize that using anger to control others leads to failure. Reflect more on the consequences of the actions. Guard against vanity and false pride. Seek to develop a positive ego identi and identity. Give selfless service. Let love and compassion radiate, radiate within. Okay, let's move on. And now we have Ogun. Ogun is, is associated with the heart chakra. Here we focus on develop a high sense of awareness and sensitivity. Like I said, you're going to be coming back to the heart chakra a lot because the heart chakra is associated with healing. All right. It's associated with awareness. It's associated with evolution. So you're going to be coming back a lot to the heart chakra, working on, uh, on the other chakras. So we're going to focus on the sense of purity, innocence, and magnetism. Reflect on the inner sounds. Strive to become independent. Strive to attain wisdom and inner strength. Control your breathing and your heart rate. Purity in your relationships through the inner balancing of the male and female energies. All right, so you're going to be coming back to this heart chakra a lot, lot like I just mentioned. And these are the things that you're going to be focusing on 
attributes that you're going to be focusing on when you work on these chakras or with the Orishas or tapping into that Orisha energy. The throat chakra is associated with Abatala, which focuses on the purified sound to affect listeners in a positive way, awakening and dawning of awareness of eternal knowledge. Supreme wisdom must overcome emotions of the heart. And so some of us are we are being ruled by our emotions too. And that's to get and, and Abatala kind of gets that into balance because you don't want to be reacting when you're when you're acting at your emotions, you're doing a lot of reacting. Use psychic energy and clairvoyance to communicate without words. Guard against negative thought and use knowledge wisely. We're trying to master self here. All this is about mastering self. But you'll see some of this stuff too when in the Egyptian Pantheon or Kemet. You'll see some of this same thing going on because most of the African uh, spiritual system, they kind of, you know, they enmesh, they work together. So if you see this, you'll see this in the uh, comedic Pantheon too. All right. The third eye chakra is associated with Oran Melia, which you meditate, you know, focus on meditating on the third eye, eliminating transgressions and impurities. Reveal the divinity within, to reflect on the divinity on others, a pra practice cosmic oneness, proper balance through spiritual devotion, the ability to produce visions of the past, present, and future. A lot of this right here, too, is probably going to deal with divination. Now, people at Ifa, they usually go get in a do to see what's going on with them. But I do encourage you to do some meditating, you know, to get some meditating going on. That is really going to help you a lot uh, in opening up that third eye. All right. Or you can do some shamanic journeying, you know, where where you can travel from the past, present and future through meditation, through a meditation practice called shamanic traveling or path working. So you want to try that as well when you're opening up your third eye. And last but not least is the Ori. Now the Ori is the crown chakra. It strives to reach the guru within through consciousness. And it's able to attain oneness with all. It strives to lose the illusion of the individual self. Realize that the cosmic principle that governs the entire universe is within and strive to feel the divine and fully realize divinity within so when we reach that the crown chakra the aura this is total unity this is when you reach your total uh you know godhood you're you're operating out of your higher self so that's when you reach you know your 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 divinity is when you've totally uh ascended is when you at that seven level of consciousness, you are in that divinity, godhood, unity. All right. So I hope this video helped you. You can also go look on the channel. I do have some of these meditations, some Orisha meditations on the channel. If you're interested in our courses, please click the link below. If you're interested in our services, click the link below and I'll leave a link, some links here so you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I hope this video was insightful. I thank you so much for being here with me today. Light and love. May the ancestors be with you.